Hello, I'm Tom Harvey, Director of Advice in SES Institutional Group, responsible for helping clients analyze the impact of pension-related decisions on overall corporate finance. Today, I'd like to spend a few minutes reviewing why companies are now considering a switch to mark-to-market -market accounting and analyze the reactions of key stakeholders, including investors, analysts, rating agencies, and internal management. The implementation of Accounting Standards Codification 715 in 2006 moved pension economics out of the footnotes and directly onto the financial statements of corporate America. The net assets and liabilities of a company's defined benefit plan were added to the balance sheet to provide investors with a more transparent view of the economic realities associated with pension plans. At the time, there were well-publicized concerns on the part of senior management, of plan sponsors, as well as the investment community of the potentially dire consequences of bringing these large liabilities onto balance sheets. However, it does not appear as if there has been much impact on share prices, borrowing rates, or management compensation since this change. Although the impact has been minimal, the changes from ASC 715 were only an interim step towards mark-to-market -market accounting for pension plans. The reason is that the income statement continues to carry the return smoothing aspects of traditional gap accounting for pensions, utilizing an expected return on pension assets rather than the actual return. As we can see here in this chart, the standard accounting approach minimizes volatility in earnings caused by the pension funds by using an expected return while amortizing the difference between projected and actual returns over time. The vast majority of plans today are significantly underfunded, and this impact is fully recognized on the balance sheet. Most pensions have large pension assets losses held in accumulated other comprehensive income accounts which promise an ongoing drag on earnings as they eventually flow through to the income statement. A way to minimize the impact of the amortization of past losses in the pension plan is to implement full mark-to-market -market accounting for pension expenses. SEI researched 23 companies that implemented mark-to-market -market accounting in the past several years, which you can find more detail on in the accompanying paper. In reviewing the data of these companies, it is apparent that most of these companies share two common characteristics. First, that the pension plans of these companies are typically two times larger relative to the plan sponsor's market capitalization and balance sheet. And secondly, these companies were experiencing loss amortization expenses as a percent of net income approximately three times higher than the average pension plan prior to the transition to mark-to-market -to -market accounting. Companies evaluating the shift to mark-to-market -to -market accounting will want to analyze the potential for negative earnings by asking questions around potential reaction of four key stakeholder groups, investors and the market, the analyst community, ratings agencies, and internal management. Using data from over 23 companies who have implemented mark-to-market -market accounting in the past few years, SEI conducted event studies and research to analyze the response of each of these groups to the change in accounting practices. I will provide an overview of the research here in the video, and for the full details, please download our accompanying paper. In terms of the investor reaction, SEI's research determined that the reaction by investors was minimal. There were no direct obvious changes in the market valuations due to the implementation of mark-to-market -market accounting. This was expected as changes in accounting measures have no cash implications and shouldn't have direct impact on share prices. Next, SEI looked at the response by the analyst community. In general, the vast majority of equity analysis is relative analysis, where a company's financial metrics are evaluated against a set of company comparables. Analysts default to common metrics, even recognizing the deficiencies of GAAP and unwinding those in evaluating the quality of earnings and cash demands of the pension. Most analysts unwind the impact of the mark-to-market -market pension adjustments made to GAAP financial statements for comparison purposes, while continuing to focus on anticipated cash contributions in determining projected free cash flows. In terms of the rating agency's response, our research and discussions with the agencies indicates that a shift to mark-to-market -market accounting by a plan sponsor would mirror the current financial analysis of the major rating agencies today. The ratings methodologies, combined with a current analytical approach of the major rating agencies applying mark-to-market -market principles, implies a negligible impact of this accounting shift to a plan sponsor's credit rating. Finally, SCI analyzed the response by internal management as part of our study. 
For companies where a portion of the management team's incentive compensation is tied to GAAP earnings, or EPS, all companies adjusted their earnings calculation to neutralize the effect of mark-to-market -market accounting, shielding management bonuses from the volatility of actual pension performance. However, at companies which maintain aggressive investment portfolios, the resulting higher expected return has a positive impact on EPS, and these benefits are passed on to senior management. In summary, while there is much discussion regarding the pros and cons associated with full mark-to-market accounting for pensions, the reaction of stakeholders and the subsequent impact is generally negligible. For a full finding of SAS research of the impact of mark-to-market accounting, please download the full paper. Thank you.